Hello, everyone, and welcome. It is your friend, the John Bacon. Finally getting on with this vlog, but really I realize that uh, this isn't truly a vlog. It's more of a podcast. I'm calling it What's Shaking with Bacon. Thank you, Miss Mindy, for the uh, awesome idea. Check her out on Twitch. We'll maybe look at her later. Uh, so the purpose of this you know, podcast is to essentially ramble. Uh, it's more therapeutic for me than probably it is for you. If you choose to view, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate your support. Um, but otherwise, it's just me staring at the camera and going through my Twitter feed, my Instagram, or whatever I'm feeling for that week. I'll try to do it on Wednesday or Thursday. No guarantees. If it's successful, hey, we'll keep going with it. If it's trash, we'll junk it. All right. So uh, first things first, I said I was going to start doing a vlog. If that upsets you, I don't fucking care. Thanks. Uh, sort of a thought process is always, um, in my opinion, a bit empowering. You know, never second guess yourself. And if you want to do something, just do it. Be proud of it. And say, you know what, man? Through the haters. I want to build a PC. I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Let's spend as little money as possible. Buy things used off of Craigslist. Do cartwheels in front of strangers for money uh, so that I can buy the parts. And eventually, if it works out, awesome. Great. Or, you know, at least we earn something from that experience. And that's what I'm doing with this. So, uh, Super Raw, uh, the only time that I'll really edit it is in the event that I just go on a terrible tangent or somebody calls me on the phone and I absolutely have to take the call or like I get a dog situation where one of the dogs I have a bunch of dogs uh at any time uh minimum three dogs in the house optimal for me personally I like to have five even though technically as far as guardianship goes I only have three so love dogs I hope you do too if not check yourself all right so we're starting the podcast what's shaking with bacon I greatly appreciate you guys tuning in. Scrolling all the way down. There's so much awesomeness here. Uh, this is my Twitter profile. It's twitter.com forward slash the John Bacon. Uh, lots of good stuff here. It'll all load here in a second. We'll just kind of rewind back a little bit in time. And um, from there, come on, girl. Come on, girl. All righty. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. There we are. So today's date is the 23rd, uh, it's a Thursday, tomorrow obviously is the 24th, and it's a Friday, and Saturday, Saturday is a Fortnite tournament in St. Louis, so I'm from St. Louis, uh, Missouri, I love it here, it's a very rough and tumble city, uh, regardless of what anybody tells you, it absolutely freaking is, it's the most dangerous city per capita, um, <laughs> yay us, and like the weird part about St. Louis is almost like a source of pride, or a bit of a joke at times, as far as whether or not you're going to be accosted or if you could die. So, scrolling on down, tangent. See, I'm a very tangential guy. So, tell you what. Let's go ahead and start with this guy right here. My content pre and post vacation has been shit lately. And that's on me. Because I'm the one making it. I need to get back to having more fun and focus on creating engaging streams instead, or engaging streams rather than zoning in on what I'm doing. Sorry, I got distracted. I will do better because I can. I think that's really important. Okay, sorry, I just got a, a Twitter DM. Hopefully it doesn't show up on screen, but it's about the Pokemon stream that's coming to Twitch. Tangent! Uh, maybe eventually, whenever we get this uh, situated, it'll be like, tangent alert up at the top, or probably like right here would be good to have that. But uh, yeah, so starting the 27th, Twitch will be running a Pokemon marathon similar to what they did with uh, this. Let's check this out. It might make things easier. But uh, regardless, there we are. Uh, regardless, it's going to be really cool to watch, just like what they did with Mr. Rogers and all the other people. Stuff. So basically, um, prior to vacation, I did some sharing of Gary Vaynerchuk a.k.a. Gary V, uh, one of the most influential people in the world, if not the most influential person. He took what they did in the 60s and 70s with Mad Men and turned it into the modern era. He wants to buy the Jets. He's a huge personal hero of mine and a main source of you know, motivation and inspiration 
Um, and basically has like listed out all of the keys to success in this modern era as far as being a digital influencer is concerned. And um, as always, the thing is uh, execution quality. And for me personally, my quality has been lacking. And uh, what I did after vacation is kind of like took a step back at my streams, looked at it and said, you know what? We're not really having as much fun as we used to. And no matter what streaming, this podcast, whatever is truly at the core of it for me. And if it doesn't resonate with anybody, that's okay. But we at least tried. We had fun with it. And uh, it came from the heart. And uh, ultimately, that's what I started doing. I did my goofy tangents more on stream. Um, I've so back to the story about the computer tangent. Uh, was able to get great deals from a local computer shop called CRS Computers Computer uh, Services. Uh, he specializes a lot in old Dell Optiplexes, and that's been something that I've been wanting to like turn into a gaming computer uh, because there's a ton of great YouTube videos on making a gaming computer from a Dell Optiplex, and so I've been haunting that for a while looking for a Core i7 to pop up. And there were several other sellers local in St. Louis that had a few of them pop up that were third gen, and that's fine, because uh, they if you can get an unlocked one, they're really good. But unlocked uh, Core i7, meaning you can, like tweak them. Normally the CPUs come from the factory locked, like they operate a certain way, but Intel and AMD both do offer unlocked CPUs uh, that allow you to go in and like, Week with them and like kind of like a hot rod tune them up a little bit which is pretty cool right so anyways uh i was looking for an unlocked cpu the best i could find locally is like a second gen a few optiplexes with the unlocked cpu or the lock cpus were like third gen. and then all of a sudden the guy that i bought um my laptop from that i used to run the streams from posted the uh setup that i have now which is a 4th gen Intel i7 4790K. Uh, look it up. It's a pretty cool and interesting and a bit controversial uh, processor in that it came from the factory, pre-selected. They went through and like picked through the best ones and then like did some tweaking to them again to make them from the factory very fast. And uh, at the time, used a different compound to like glue the processor together so that it would exchange heat better. And so, like, I never thought I'd be able to find one, and this guy uh, did that. And so now I'm able to go on these tangential rants. Like, right now, I'm using 2% of my um, overall system resources to record this, whereas in the past, this would have taken approximately 50%. So, big increase. Thumbs up on that. We got a dog back here. Uh, that's what this little blob is. Uh, here. Dog. Why don't you lay down, sweetie? So we're able to go on tangents, and I'm able to actually have fun again. And I feel as if I'm being myself. Hence, podcast. God, we're on so many tangents in the first post. So, um, Dr. Bacon, our doggos, completed our run. We can't wait to see where we are three months from now. Couch to 5K. Uh, unfortunately, Dr. Bacon and I have not ran recently. I think that we'll run tomorrow. Um, so on the uh, 14th of August, so quite a bit of time, uh, two weeks, I rolled my ankle, unfortunately, uh, either the second or third run, in the backyard mowing grass. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's fully uh, healed, but uh, we'll continue to check. I think I'll be able to run tomorrow. As a runner, I've gotten injured so many times. I'm no Casey Neistat, guys. I'm... All right. So... I'm a huge reality TV junkie. If that bothers you, I don't care. This bother me. Let's lower the camera a little bit. Feeling the magic. Okay. So I'm a huge reality TV junkie. Uh, Dr. Bacon, my wife, loves uh, reality TV, especially Bravo. And um, anyways, so we watch all the Real Housewives, all of RuPaul's Drag Race, and um, we have like watch parties for RuPaul's Drag Race, by the way. Uh, so I'm huge into that. But anyways, Real Housewives of OC. I have a distant connection with uh, Real Housewives of OC. We'll get into that some other time. It does have to do with St. Louis. But I was watching Real Housewives of OC with um, Dr. Bacon and Kelly Dodd and Shannon Bedore became friends. 
I mean, they were enemies yelling and screaming, saying horrible. Sorry, I'm picking a dog. Uh, horrible things in the past, and I just cannot believe they're like getting along. Like, Real Housewives of OC used to be like just a bunch of uppity white ladies, like yelling at each other and being nasty, and now they're getting along as friends, which is crazy to see. So yeah, check out Real Housewives. Shameless plug. All right. Oh, these are beast. Okay. So DT Dubs. I can zoom over here. Oh, wrong button. So these are Star Wars themed kettlebells. We have a Stormtrooper, a Darth Vader, and a Bobo Fett from the company on it. And uh, these are beast kettlebells. These are not 20 pound kettlebells. These are heavy AF. They are so cool. Um, I'm not a huge Star Wars like collector like some other people are, but man, they look really sweet and I'd love to have them. Forward. So the game that I will inevitably stream in the future is the new Spider-Man game. Uh, I might do that instead of Red Dead Redemption's streaming standpoint. It's a lot easier, obviously, I'm a streamer. Yes. Stuff up here. Um, hence the reason why I'm finally comfortable doing uh, a podcast in a raw, unedited, live format as I stream so much that it's kind of second nature now. Anyways, uh, Iron Man looks really good. I am a huge fan of the Batman Arkham series entirety like the entirety of it uh as is dr bacon she was actually may still have the top score in the second batman game against the joker where it's just wave after wave and basically you go until you um like you build time as you take on enemies and basically um she was number one for at least a year at the top of the leaderboards um gamer tag Pterodactyl some numbers. I'm picking a dog. So you gotta keep your dogs clean, man. Um, so anyways, the Spider-Man games are incredibly, incredibly influenced by Rock City Studios, but it's made by uh the same people that did Sunset Overdrive. So there's a lot of comedy, action, and fluidity there that like I think that like with the Batman Arkham games, you could fly, you could do like the grapnel boost. You can do all this cool stuff, but they've taken it to the next level um, with the kind of mechanics they had in Sunset Overdrive and the fun from some Sunset Overdrive, but embrace the combat style of Batman. So I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Which, by the way, uh, green screen is Knob Creek. Uh, uh, here, Knob Creek, a uh, big bottle from Costco. Love whiskey. Great. This game. Spider-Man on PS4, it is a PS exclusive, is going to be fantastic. It seems as if all three Game of the Year contenders are on PlayStation in some way, shape, or form, whether they be exclusive with uh, God of War, Spider-Man, and then Red Dead Redemption 2 is not an exclusive, but will look very good on the PS4 Pro, uh, which is what I'll be playing it on. Uh, all three are on PlayStation. That's really telling of the quality and the commitment that we've seen as far as the video game industry has shifted. Uh, you know, the video game industry is really chasing after the dollar, and I don't blame them. They're a business. Sorry, dogs walking around. Mike's not picking that up too bad. But anyways, I mean, keeping the lights on is key, but producing a quality product, um, Sony has been able to really excel at getting these single-player games, the genre that basically a lot of these earnings call state or dead are doing very very well and some of these you know cash grab battle royale games are dying almost instantaneously or you know people attacking it really cannot get any market share from fortnite because fortnite's permanently in beta and they can adapt so easily so it's really great to see playstation go after these single player games um that represent one a great game so for me as the consumer and you guys as the consumer, you can really enjoy it. And two, I mean, you, you put the work in, you get the money out. You know what I mean? So it's just crazy that the top three games are all single-player games. 
supposedly Activision Blizzard. Go player game. <laughs> All right. Next tweet. Uh, like a YouTube video. Uh, from. Oh my goodness, my friend, Mark, aka Squid Gaming Network. So uh, up, we'll turn the desktop audio on. In just a few minutes, stick around. I'll walk you through all the steps. So Squid Hots is a great dude, and he came up with this how to use OBS video. Um, definitely check that out. It was incredibly helpful on even myself, who's been streaming for approximately. Uh, six months. I'm a Twitch affiliate. And anyways, um, he does a really good job explaining things. Not only does he do a good job explaining things, he also uncovered some things that I didn't even know about. So definitely check out uh, Mr. Squid Gaming Network, formerly Squid Hots. Um, so then I retweeted it. Yeah. Uh, so at Squid Gaming Network uh, is Mr. Squid uh which name i think at work but uh really does a good job overviewing everything all right this is a really good tweet so uh the local brewery next to me so i'm in st louis we have a proud brewing history um i would say the three historically proud brewing cities of america are in no particular order st louis Golden, Colorado, and Milwaukee. Um, there's other areas that have strongly exploded and you know have giant market shares. Obviously, the entirety of the West Coast um, and have a great potential to grow hops. I'm just making sure a dog doesn't yank a webcam. You want to be on? You want to be on the be on the podcast? Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Sorry guys, just a brief intermission talking about beer. No, okay, fine. Let's pet you. So, anyways, um, this amazing brewery, Six Mile Bridge Beer, um, they are very close and they produce what I would argue is the highest quality beer in St. Louis. And that is not an over exaggeration. It's not because I am so close to them. Uh, it certainly helps, but whenever I go out to eat, and Six Mile Bridge is offered, I will buy that over anything else because one, I know the people that made it, of course. There's that personal connection there, so that bias I cannot take away. But they import ingredients. from. So if they wanna make some sort of Belgian ale, they will buy the ingredients, in, like have a buyer, get the ingredients for them in Belgium, and then send that to them. Whether it be um, sugar, yeast, Ops, whatever. They do it right. They do it um, with quality first. And if it's not good, you're not going to taste it. It's a super small operation. That's the husband and wife there. Uh, Ryan is the husband. And Lindsay. Lindsay, I've talked to her on the phone. Um, is to like, hey, are you guys open? Can I get... Some beer and they're like no but we're here at the brewery so I guess please bring a growler up what do you want um, so like even more so so blood orange wheat is what the dogs finally up here this is a different dog this is uh, anyways so like they went through and bought literally all of the blood oranges for their special edition blood orange wheat and it is fantastic um, and that's just like how crazy they committed they are. I mean, it's a very small shop. I would estimate uh, guaranteed less than 20, not five. But they do a tremendous, incredible job brewing beer. Um, and if it's not up to snuff, they also are really big on supporting other St. Louis companies um, and working with people to you know, support like food trucks or pop-up shops or whatever else, those trivia what have you. And so they open the brewery up to people, restaurants, etc., to showcase their wares as well. And it's just a great, great, great experience. So definitely check out Six Mile Bridge Beer. They're here in St. Louis, uh, Maryland Heights proper. Um, 
Like I said, they are having Heavy Smoke come tomorrow, which is a local barbecue place. But um, they just recently started getting cans. Um, so Fresh Time is able to get that if you have Fresh Time near you. Also, Total Wine has... Um, here's their logo and a beer. I actually made a, uh, a video about just like a little time a montage or time thing. I, I don't know. Uh, I made that before. It was really great. I think their most popular picture on Google Maps features Dare to Smile. So that's pretty, pretty cool, yo. All right. So uh, a dude that is super cool is Nab. Sorry, I had to say I had to say Vegeta and then say Nabjita. So just like Vegeta, Nabjita. He is a Super Saiyan, great streamer. I've really been enjoying what he's been doing lately. He's been playing Arkham City as well as Saints Row. Him and a um, another person in multiple communities, Susie Knows, played Saints Row the other day, and it was full of just comedy gold. Uh, they really balance each other well. Susie is from the UK. Nab's here in the States. So there's that little like flick of accent and just the chemistry they had the whole time throughout the stream was absolutely fantastic. I loved it. You guys should definitely check them out. Or check, sorry, check Nab out. Susie knows it's great too. Um, Pink is the devil. Uh, is, is It's pretty uh, rowdy in the uh, Rainbow Six Siege. Um, and while he's streaming, he like, you know, does various sound effects. It's pretty funny. Uh, let's see if we can find... Nope, there's no clip here. Um... Uh, oh, Exoist. Exoist, long time. I met her just like Arthur Slugworth, who we'll talk about in a little bit, um, via Instagram. And she is super supportive and super great. She likes all of my stuff. She reposts, reshares. Likes, you know, she's just awesome. Definitely check her out. Ice T, who's becoming um, a recent follow and a recent like this dude. I like him. A reminder that I'm working from home tomorrow. Um, he has maxed out his character in Destiny Two. Unlike everybody, Ice has not given up on Destiny. Um, he's full leveled, and then this led to a giant uproar because people found out Ice T has two gaming consoles, and that really pissed him off. So you'll see another tweet later on about me just like, "All right, easy there, adults." Uh, comment on Spider Man. We kind of already went into that uh, as far as uh, Insomniac Games being influenced by Rocksteady. The people in Jack Man Arkham. That's cool. Um. Oh yeah, this is really good. So, uh, player unknown, aka Brendan Green, posted this tweet, and you can't necessarily see it easy. Uh, apologies about that, but pizza and PUBG test servers with Shroud, not a bad way to wrap up the day. And then, so Eric hits. He's a guy that works for UGC. It was official title. Events and esports coordinator for UGC. That is the league that I play Fortnite with. Um noted that the flying car guy was just there. Uh, that is a reference to Shroud, a.k.a. Rowdy Shroudy, getting banned from PUBG from interacting with a hacker who, like, Shroud wasn't necessarily, like, hacking himself. He was just like, what the hell is going on? And um, got in this, like, got in this hacker's car. It was like, I think it was Solos. Uh, but anyways, got in this guy, this hacker's car, and the car flew through the air. And eventually, you know, Shroud got banned, as did, obviously, the hacker. But Shroud was only banned for a day. But Eric Hicks killing it, bro. Okay, another great brewery. <clears throat> Is Urban Chestnut Brewing. They also have an Urban Research Brewery here in St. Louis. Um, that is a super awesome brewery as well. The guy that runs Urban Chestnut owns it. The head brewer is Florian Kopf. I believe. And um, he was the head brewer for Michelob for Anheuser-Busch. After the buyout happened with InBev, he elected to start his own brewery. Uh, he is Bavarian trained. Uh, he knows his Rheingebots and um, brings a lot of fun to beer, both mirroring traditional styles 
and New Trends does a great job with every beer. And they're not willing to be, sorry, they're unwilling to be resting on their morals. That sentence made Anyways, they're willing to experiment with sours. They're willing to go anywhere. And that kind of led them into a fun area called their Urban Research Brewery where they sell pizza by the slice like this. And they uh, test out new beers and allow the local St. Louis beer scene to try them out and say, like, this is bad. Uh, and uh, it's a really cool experience. And, like, dirt cheap as it's. They get high quality top tier beer before anybody else does. It's good and it tastes well and like it tests well. Um, and also great pizza like this little. All right. Yep, easy there. So we got a GIF. Every time my dogs get a rabbit and it's a mess to clean up. Uh, so uh, the two girls, uh, the big girls that I have, are St. Louis hounds, meaning they're a mixture of all breeds. Most people in the media would call them a pit bull. I have not had them genetically tested, but seeing many dogs that look like a pit bull that have been genetically tested, this is my soapbox. Anyways, uh, a lot of the times they're not actually pit bulls, they're just breeds. So here in St. Louis, where we have a giant population, and it is a cause that I'm very involved with, I just call it St. Louis Hound because there's no way to know what type of the breed the dog is, unless like it's very clear, like a Rottweiler or St. Louis or Collie. So. Um, that soapbox off uh, dogs are dogs as Caesar Milan would say they're animals and they're predators uh, both dogs were actually feral we got the tan one here Nellie we got her at six months so she didn't have any like um, true survivor um, tendencies or like you've seen the show uh, The Walking Dead uh, essentially Michonne's character uh, is what typically a feral dog will represent uh, Trace, our black dog, is definitely still got a lot of those survival, scrappy mentalities. Because, I mean, she's a multi-generational wild dog. Uh, so, anyways, both of them still have their instinctual drive to go after prey. And that, in my opinion, is not a bad thing. But occasionally, your boy, the John Bacon, will be on conference calls talking about toxicology or SAP systems. And I'll look outside because the dogs essentially have... Um, rules, boundaries, and limitations. And um, as a result of those rules, boundaries, and limitations, they are allowed to go outside freely so that they are able to remove themselves outside instead of in my house. If I'm in a conference call from the house, I just crack the door. In any ways, I was in a conference call and I live in suburbia and there's a lot of predators and my environmental science degree would indicate that in the event there's not a lot of predators or prey herb, herbivore herbivorous um, organisms uh, anything near a carnivorous predator will go after said herbivorous um, non or prey species and so essentially the dogs go after rabbits and the baby rabbits, um, and the junior rabbits, pretty quick. And uh, the girls are very fast. And the baby rabbits and, like, the middle-aged rabbits get away no problem. The big adult rabbits that can't fat cells through the fence do not. And so I have to, like, mute the conference call, but, like, put in the chat of the conference call. Uh... We'll be back very quickly. Apologies because uh, my neighbors, so it goes my backyard, neighbor's backyard, neighbor stays at home and has other kids that play in the backyard all day. Uh, the dogs got the rabbit with the kids in the backyard and I didn't want the children to understand how life works. So um, yeah, that was a fun day. And it was very gross. The circle of life. I, I'm probably going to get flagged by Disney for that. That's okay. Um, so what I've been streaming lately um, in the queue is not a hero. I'm going to switch that over to Facebook. Uh, so facebook.com forward slash the John Bacon is where I'll be playing not a hero. It's a great game. Hilarious through and through. Uh, indie darling. Uh, like 8-bit to bit uh graphics so good so snarky so humorous that's great 
Uh, I've started Dead Cells. I did it last night, so with the upgraded computer and having proper hardware, I can stream and game at the same time. Sorry about the text messages. Um, I can stream at the game at the same time, so I'm going to do that, and I'm really excited to play Dead Cells because it has Twitch internet. So I'm moving Not a Hero to Facebook, and then Dead Cells to Twitch, and then continuing my God of War playthrough. So much fun, guys. Definitely check, check out twitch.tv forward slash the John Bacon or facebook.com forward slash the John Bacon. All right. Hyphenated isn't non hyphenated, is. Big shower thought. All right. So, the first stream of Spinosaurus, that's the name of my computer. It is Spinosaurus because the first computer was Megalodon, which is a giant pre shark. Um, I don't know why I like to name my computer. Anyways, so Megalodon is the laptop that I use still for streaming. Uh, I might use it like in the end of my vacation or I don't know. It's just good to have a secondary like backup, especially if that's my streaming career off of. Um, so I have that still, and I use it predominantly to read chat, but we upgraded uh, our lives to Mr. Spinosaurus or Mrs. Spinosaurus. I don't know how they identify, but old girl's got 4.4 gigahertz of power to run that stream. Uh, so my first stream back was a little rough. You know, you got to ease into it. We had a lot of fun with Not a Hero. Uh, the new computer held very well. Super stoked to have that happen. Um, really excited to have the computer. So as you can see, I have Steve Harvey clap. All right. Oh, we got a clip. Oh shit! Sorry about that, guys. Pause. We'll uh, go ahead and. Nope. Technical difficulties, guys. Don't worry. I'm a professional. God, stop. Darn it. Web UFI, man. Okay, let's make sure that the desktop audio is able to hear all of this. This is me playing Not a Hero. Touch your eyelids. That's how wonderful it was. We gotta go here. It made me want to touch your eyelids. Touch your eyelids. That's how wonderful it was. It made me want to touch your eyelids. Okay, touch goodness. Your That's how one touch your eyelids. That's, That's how one it was. It made me want to touch your eyelids. Bill <laughs> <laughs> back on and we're cooking with utterly sexy gas now, Cletus. Um, eat up. <laughs> we need to go and pick up a massive bomb for tomorrow. <laughs> I can't I think so. touch your eyelids. That's how wonderful it was. It made me want to touch your eyelids. All right, that's enough of that. Easy, Hamzilla. All right, then we did God of War playthrough. God of War, we got ultra sweaty, try hard mode. Uh, dude, I've been watching lately is Fanboy Brian. Is a Game Attack G1. He's uh, playing Madden, and if you guys tune in, he may name a player after you. He named uh, your boy as a player on his roster. And... I'm doing quite well, and we're going to see a lot of that. Here we go. Here we go. Pause. We're going to open this up because I'm not a noob anymore. Throwing his Brady on third down. Yes, the big play. out of his hands. Making the play. Making a play. The John Bacon. Thank you for turning your back to the camera. I appreciate it. I need to learn people's numbers. No, I'm not Gronkowski, am I? Did he assign me as Gronkowski? I'm Gronk on his channel? Feels good. I got goosebumps. I don't know if it... Sorry, I'm not a fan of like the NFL anymore after what happened with St. Louis and the Rams, but I'm a fan of Gronk because he's in Alright, so we had a tremendous amount of generosity on the stream of um playing Not a Hero, uh as well as uh me impersonating one of my biggest 
most supportive followers, Dolly Pero. So here's a quick clip of that. It's pretty funny. I gotta, I gotta get better. Dolly, perfect, ever. But I can try, or I can try. Actually, this is me as Big Dolly Rocco, aka Rock Bottom TV, impersonating Dolly. It's an impersonation of an impersonation. Uh, but yeah, that's a little goober. <clears throat> and then also we had a bacon squawk. So not hold on, we got to make sure we got this set up right. So not like my normal self. I actually am going to come back. I will come back. Don't worry. I've got a lot of fat loot that I need to unload at one of those shops. I'll come back. I promise. Three, two, bring the chat back too. Bring the chat back. Go. Ah! Sorry. <laughs> that was the bacon squash. Up, oh, guys. Uh, really quick, let me uh, mute this. God, how long does it take, Bacon? Come on! Oh, top tier content! <clears throat> Alrighty then, and Wire Magic gave very generously. Again, <clears throat> thank you to Wire Magic for the massive donation on stream. That was super awesome. So I think Bloody Try Hard mode seems a lot of fun. On yesterday's stream, so I'm keeping them now. Now to, ma now to make. Some scenes for when I'm salty as a mofo. Do I have those? I do not have those integrated into your chat, but uh, you will see them soon. Don't worry. Uh, if you, especially if you join me on stream. Um, so there, there's that bacon squawk. To clarify. Oh, this is, uh, I missed a, uh, a play, or almost missed a play tackling uh, in uh, Fanboy Brian's stream. Like, all of a sudden, it just came from nowhere and tackled the guy. I'm a huge fan. Any barbecue. But I don't love ribs. That's okay. Don't agree on that. That's barbecue. Maybe burnt ends, but ribs are better. Um, so I said that it was because I was uh, at the concession stand getting some ribs. Bitwit or nitwit. Uh, so Kyle, uh, a.k.a. Bitwit on YouTube, is a great PC and tech channel. Um, he did a game show where he told somebody that he was going to sell them, I believe it was a Meshify C case, and then proceeded to, like, ask him five trivia questions to get a full-blown, like, top-tier uh, built gaming PC. And the guy won. Spoiler. And uh, it was just really cool to watch. So definitely check out Bitwit on YouTube. Oh, uh, yes. Shameless plug for Facebook.com, the John Bacon, where I reached a total of 1,364 people. That's pretty cool. I'm trying to also get affiliated and partnered on Facebook. It'd be really great if you guys followed me there. All right, let's shake them with bacon. Oh my goodness, this is so hype. There is now uh, the ability to group things together in OBS, which is pretty beast uh, for anybody that creates content using OBS such as myself. Pretty great. Uh, all right. I want you to do me a favor. Pledge right now that you will take care. Take a little time each day. Self care. Play a game. Book. Walk the dog. Quality time with someone you love every. No matter how busy or stressed, every single day. So Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight is one of those OG YouTubers that refuses to die, refuses to give up, no matter how in his head he gets or how overweight he was. He's always striving to do better, and he's a huge personal inspiration and influence on my channel. Occasionally, sometimes I will um, grab his, um, his coming at you live, once again, through the power of the internet intro, and that's my bad. It's just, he's such a great YouTuber, such a great content creator. You guys should definitely check him out if you're not there. His rambling series, rambling series has strongly, of course, influenced my own rambling series, which is at currently... 40 minutes long. Oh my God. It's great. 
Uh, so, uh, anytime any, like, celebrity, what I'd consider, like, A-tier old celebrity, uh, is able to embrace memes, I effing love it. So, Dolly Parton's, like, huge, biggest song is Jolene, which she sings about begging another woman not to take her man. And Dolly Parton sharing this meme made my effing great. Built my first computer tonight. This is what Spinosaurus looks like. It is a Thermaltake V21. Uh, that's a Corsair fan. This is a Hyper or a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo MSI MATX motherboard. Um, Thermaltake liked it on Instagram. Check me out Instagram.com forward slash the John Bacon. Uh, they said Thermaltake. Or V21 equals Bay, and I totally agree. Big news for any drag race fans, especially RuPaul's Drag Race or, you know, drag queen fans. Alyssa Edwards has her own docuseries on Netflix coming out. I believe it's coming out in October. It's going to be amazing. Um, Alyssa Edwards, AK, sorry, let me start that sentence. Alyssa Edwards, aka Gila Monster, is fucking hilariously entertaining um just amazing and this is going to be gold the whole way through guarantee it check it out i don't care if you don't like drag queens watch it the bacon commands it uh more pictures uh me getting some uh sweet plays on mr fanboy brian's stream again the maddens Okay, these ladies on Real Housewives of New York really have no idea how stupid they are when they constantly go after Bethany Frankel. She's not perfect, but come on, ladies, you look dumb. Keep being you, Bethany. Bethany Frankel is a, like, a very bossy lady. Like, and I'm not saying, like, mean, rude, tells people what to do. I mean, she's a freaking boss, man. She owns Skinny Girl. She went to Puerto Rico and Houston, not because it would look good. It's because, and sometimes, I mean, she makes sure that the cameras are there, but that's to spread awareness, man. She showcased, like, bad stuff still in Puerto Rico. Nothing has happened, and, man, things need to change. And it's like doing that out of her own pocket. Pray. Coming up on today's news, guys, I broke the news at work that I am leaving the team officially and i'm going to another department everyone on my team handled the news very well i wanted i thanked all of them and it truly has been so i'm switching from the role of it liaison and um head of systems and processes for the western hemisphere to work in project management for a toxicology team um partially because my strengths core training etc is in toxicology rather than the systems that uh, derive toxicology calculations where i went for a while two and a half years uh, but i've really truly been blessed to work with some of the smartest people in the world um and the reason why i say that is literally to find my job currently will be a very hard replacement i wish my team the very best trying to find a candidate um, I kind of looked into the position and really grew over the last two years. And I, I, I really, really am thankful that I had such a patient and um, kind team. Uh, the rest of them are based in Germany and the willingness to speak English over the last two, two and a half years. Um, and I'm the only English speaker has been just incredibly kind. Um, really appreciate it. I've learned so much from each one of them. And uh the first time in my life being behind uh, professionally really led to a lot of good positive growth on my side. So really thankful for it. And uh, that's basically the biggest update in life. Uh, Remy, a.k.a. Panda, did, had a job interview. I hope it went well. Um, Ice-T said the fact that some adults are butthole or butthurt, <laughs> butthole, butthurt simply because I own two game consoles. So that makes me rich. Absolutely amazing, man. I've got a PC, a Nintendo Switch, a uh, Super NES, a PS Pro, an OG Xbox, uh, looking at the gaming shelf, a PS1, a Nintendo 64, a GameCube, an original SNES, and a Sega. So, uh, 
though. I must be fucking loaded, bro. Not. Um, and then finally, back to this. I'm going to do a vlog. And if that upsets you, fucking turns out bacon podcast and that is the completion of it with 45 minutes almost exactly guys i thank you from the bottom of my heart for tuning in hopefully this was in some way shape or some way shape or form enjoyable if not hey we'll try again next time otherwise please slap a like on this video share it amongst your friends and tune in next week for what's shaking with bacon see you guys soon Bye.